Good evening, everybody. Thank you all for registering and attending this seven-day online faculty development program on outcome-based education, OBE. This is being organized by the Internal Quality Assurance Cell IQSC of St. James College of Nursing and St. James College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Chalapadi, in association with the Kerala State High Education Council, KCTC. We would like to welcome today's resource person, Dr. Mendes Jacob, and all the FTP resource persons, managers, directors, principals, vice principals, representatives from management, HODs, IQSC coordinators, and all faculty members. About this FTP, uh, this was a seven day program with live sessions at the same timing of 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. This is actually our sixth day of the FTP. And in case you missed any of the sessions, uh, you, want, you will receive is the recordings are available in the LMS for the paid candidates. All the participants who have paid the processing fee will receive the LMS access, the media recordings for all the days, and also a participation certificate. If any of you have to make the payment and would like to receive the access to the LMS, you can make the payment of rupees 300 to St. James Hospital to the account details that I will put in the chat shortly. LMS has hands-on activities that are to be completed along with the FTP. My name is Sajin Jacob George. I'm the Global Relations Manager with IPSR Solutions Limited, and I am the event moderator. Now, moving on to today's session, today's topic will be on uh, calculation of attainment in OBE and analytics reports for accreditation. This will be delivered by Dr. Mendes Jacob, who is an MSc, MPhil, PhD, and MIOD. He is the CEO of IPSR Solutions Limited and Valid Technologies, UK, USA, and Canada. He is an academician and entrepreneur with 30 plus years of experience. He is also the professor and director of MCA program at Marine College, Kodikana Autonomous, and the former director of School of Applicant Mathematics, MG University. He has acted as chairman and member of of many academic bodies constituted by the university. He is also a member of academic and administrative bodies of other autonomous colleges, engineering colleges, and business schools. He has received the Best Entrepreneur Award from the Chief Minister of Kerala and IT Education Excellence Award from the Defense Minister of India. IPSA Solutions Limited, under the leadership of Dr. Mendes Jacob, has bagged the Saman Patra Award from Ministry of of Finance, Government of India, and Best Education Technology Solutions Provider 2019 Award from the Integrated Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The company has also received 37 awards, both national and international, uh, for the best training partner from Red Hat, the leaders in open source. Dr. Mendes Jacob is a PhD in operations research and has, to his credit, a number of national and, and international publications. He is a research guide of Lincoln University, Malaysia. He has served as a resource person for many national and international seminars and conferences in mathematics, management, and computer applications. He has organized, conducted, and served as a resource person for a number of faculty development programs, including UGC-sponsored refresher courses. His areas of interest include national education policy, outcome-based education, accreditation, etc. Over to you, Sam. Then, uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Good evening and welcome to this uh, section of uh, faculty development program on outcome based education. Uh, we had already gone through the, the basic concepts, the, the foundations of OB, the architecture of OB, mapping, and all those things. So, today we will discuss uh, uh, mostly about the calculation of uh, attainment level. Maybe uh, it's a dull subject because a lot of calculations are there, maybe for uh, some faculty members from uh, humanities or uh, uh, other uh, disciplines, they may find it bored. But let us uh, discuss it because, uh, you know, uh, at least the process every faculty should know. When you are going for an accreditation or a NB accreditation or NAC accreditation, uh, the during the peer team visit, they may ask, what is the process of attainment calculation in your institution? 
So we should understand how the attainment calculation is done in our institutions, the logic behind it, at least some calculations and all. Okay, so before going to the section, uh, I think some of the faculty members are yet to join. Uh, I will share a Mentimeter slide so that uh, we will start with uh, some interactive sessions. After that, uh, we will discuss in detail. I have shared a link in the chat box. Uh, you can just go to that link and you can answer this question and give your response. The question is, what are the strong pillars of a teacher? Uh, you can go to that link in the chat box. Otherwise, those who are joined from uh, YouTube live, you can go to mendy.com, which is written on the top of this screen, mendy.com, and you can use the code. The code is also given there, 29761511. Just go to mendy.com on your browser. You will be asked a code there. You can type that code. It is also given on the top of the screen, 29761511. Or you can go to that link which is given in the chat box. So this is the question. What are the strong pillars of a teacher? We require the responses for this session. Maybe uh, in between we will see. Okay. <clears throat> Some of you have already given your response. Teaching skill, feedback skill, evaluation skill, then mentoring teaching, knowledge, knowledge of the subject, understanding, yeah, communication, evaluation skill, accessibility, motivation, commitment and passion, content knowledge, topic knowledge, It's good, uh, we are receiving a lot of uh, responses like this. Organized, attitude, yeah. So for the late, late comers, the chat box, the link is available. You can go to that link, you can open that link. Otherwise, you can go to menti.com. You can go to menti.com there. Two nine seven six one five double one. Yeah. So these are the responses. Uh, willingness, willingness to learn, mentorship, good knowledge, enthusiasm, teaching methodologies. Yes. Okay. So this is a trend. Almost, I think uh, we are receiving responses. Uh, student expectation. Yeah. Strong knowledge, research orientation, confidence, problem solving skill, evaluation skill, leadership. Yeah. So these are the kind of uh, what are they? Can we ca ca categorize? These say the responses into three categories like ask. Most of the trainers, the personality development trainers, they use these terms, no? 
attitude, skill, and knowledge with the teacher. Now, <clears throat> you might have heard these three words, attitude, skill, and knowledge during the first day session. When uh, Dr. Sunil Job was handling the Bloom's taxonomy sessions, started with that, no? Attitude, skill, and knowledge. So this is the three areas where we have to focus. As a faculty, as a teacher, we should focus on these three areas. And as a student, if you consider that you can, you can divide the graduate attributes into three categories. Okay, so this is again, it will come in our discussion. Then I will, this also we require some inputs. Uh, the same link you can use, you can use. The same link you can use and you can give response for this question also. Uh, what is the question? Which activities or assessments is more suitable for outcome based education? Usually, we have examinations, we pro give them assignment, then case study or internship. All these are some of the activities or assessments we provide it to students. So, which of these activities or assessments is more suitable for implementation of outcome based education in an effective way? You can give your responses. The same link you can use. Otherwise, you can go to mendy.com. You can go to mendy.com, the browser, and you can use that code, the same code which we have used for the previous slide. Once more, I will enter that link. Please give your responses on the Mendimeter so that we can see, everybody can see it, the screen, not in the tab words. When we are implementing outcome-based education, we have the PO, PSO, COs, and all. Okay. So our objective is every student who join for the program or the course should meet the outcomes up to a certain level. Or we, when we fit a target, we can fit a target like 50% or 60%. The student should meet that target. That is our objective. Okay, so to meet the target or to attain the outcomes, which activity will be more helpful? That is a question. So we are getting some responses. Uh, you can see more participants voted for project work, then internship, then case study, assignment, then examinations, then seminar. I hope you have understood my question. No? The question is like this. Which all activities or which activity or assessment is more suitable for outcome-based education? These are the usual activities or tasks or assessment we provide to students. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now, just reflect on these activities or assessments. Suppose if you consider project work, when a student is doing project work, he'll be uh, exploring some real life situation. He'll be finding solution for uh, some particular real life situation. So in that case, you can see many of the graduate attributes you can map with project work. If you consider project work as a course, you can map it with the communication skills if it is a graduate attribute. You can map it with the team skills. Then problem solving skills. Uh, to many of the program outcomes, you can map, uh, map this project work. Same way with internship or case study or assignment. If you consider an assignment, maybe uh, the student has to explore on internet, has to do some research. Okay, in that way he's maybe doing the assignment. 
then coming to the seminar um, examination we will discuss at the end uh, seminar if a student has to take the seminar then naturally you know the uh, communication skills will improve many other skills he will acquire while uh, you know presenting a seminar now what about exams we have internal exams continuous assessments maybe uh, uh, we may have uh, one or two internal examinations uh, there may be 10 or 15 questions in the question paper then at the end we will have the semester end exam the semester end exam means it may be an exam of three hours so within three hours the student may be writing answers for 20 or 25 questions so is it sufficient for uh, improving his graduate attitudes writing an exam okay so you can reflect on it probably tomorrow we will discuss more about these things um, some uh, uh, best practices or case studies we will discuss tomorrow so at least you can understand now you can just reflect on these uh, answers uh, anyway it sounds uh, comes on the fifth according to the order the fifth position and seminar is the last one okay what do you think seminar or examination may be more apt for implementing ob just reflect on it okay so we will close this uh, poll now we will discuss the statement calculation and all i will share the slide so this is the agenda uh, we will first discuss about the attainment calculation i hope the slide is visible yeah uh, we'll start with the, the attainment calculation in ob uh, the process uh, we will explain then we will see some analytical reports for accreditation i will introduce a, a tool uh, so by using a tool how we can calculate the attainment calculation not only a tool we can have um excel calculations we can use the excel template for calculation and all those things then lms and task the best practice and some other area we will discuss tomorrow probably we will discuss about uh, the uh, how ob is useful for uh, accreditation process we will uh, we will uh, explore uh, criteria wise So outcome based education to outcome based evaluation how we will evaluate the attainment and all just a few slides regarding uh, maybe uh, this is again a, <clears throat> uh, we are going through the the concepts again one or two slides uh, outcome based education is a model of education that deviates from the traditional focus on what the institution provides to students in favor of making students demonstrate that they know and are able to do to achieve results so this is the buzzword the students should know and are able to do so whatever we teach uh, they should know the concept and they should be able to do to achieve results these are the difference between the traditional system and ob the traditional system it is teacher centric whereas in the ob it is student centric the traditional system we have the um, uh, more importance will be given for teaching and content whereas in ob importance on learning and processes in the traditional system knowledge driven and lot rot learning whereas in ob learning ensures knowledge and performance so that is the change or the shift from the tradi traditional system to the ob approach now earlier as a faculty when we go to the class before going to the class we will think like this what should i teach today in the class okay that is the traditional system whereas in the ob system the new uh, system uh, 
as a faculty, I should think like this. What should my students be able to do with what they learn? What should my students be able to do with what they learn? So that is the intended learning outcome. So a quote, good education happens when there is a teacher who explains well and a student who understands well. But great education happens when there is a student who explains well and a teacher who understands well. Okay. I think most of you have gone through this uh, pyramid. Uh, that is about uh, how the active learning happens. Now, starting with the lecture, only 5% of the learning will happen uh, uh, during the lecturing. Whereas through reading, 10% of learning happens. 20% of the learning happens through audio visual aids. And if somebody is demonstrating it or a practical things or like that, 30% of the learning will happen. And through discussions, 50% of the learning happens. And when the student practice doing what he has learned, 75% of the learning happens. And when we teach others, 90% of the learning happens. Okay, so when we adopt strategies or when we identify activities or assessments, this should be in our mind. So project work or internship, you know, when we ask the student to do a project work, he may be practice something. The, the concepts he has studied, he will be practicing in the, in the real life situation. So more learning will happen in those cases. So for outcome-based education, it's a paradigm shift, you know, from teaching to learning. Of course, the outcomes are there. As I, we have discussed uh, in the beginning, the three pillars of a professional, already we have discussed it. Um, these are the 12 attributes, graduate attributes for a UG engineering program announced by NBA. So we can broadly divide this into four categories. The last one is the habit, lifelong learning. Knowledge, attitude, and skill. This is what we have discussed. So we can classify them into knowledge, attitude, and skill. So this is about the program outcomes or the graduate attributes. Now, at the end of this session, <coughs> this should be the outcome of this session. We should be able to calculate the attainment level of POs, PSOs, and CEOs. Okay. So if we can provide the student with a score sheet like this, each student, if we can provide a score sheet like this, uh, this is the outcome of outcome-based education. Okay, so we can have the graduate attributes mentioned here, attainment calculation out of three. We are considering a four-point scale. So out of three, we can calculate like this. So we will see how the process is. Now for this uh, understanding the process, uh, for this demo process, I am considering POs, nine POs. These are actually the POs of my college, Marian College Kutikana. We have nine POs starting from no domain knowledge, and the last one is self directed and lifelong learning. In between, uh, we have communicative competence, proficiency in using modern technologies, reflective response to ethical and social issues, sustainability values, critical thinking and problem solving, entrepreneurship and leadership, teamwork self-directed and lifelong learning. The same way most of you have your own POs may, uh, defined for your esteemed institutions. Now I'm picking a, a program specific outcomes for a BCA program. This I have just picked up from the website. Okay, it's only for an example, uh, for calculating the attainment level. So we have five POs for this BCA. Program. Usually, the best practice is you can have a PSOs between two and four. That is enough. Here we have five. It's okay. Now, uh, I'm just picked one course Introduction to Computers for BCA. It's an uh, elementary course. And uh, suppose there are five CEOs for this particular course, starting from the first one, identify the parts of the computer system. This is only for the demo purpose. Uh, if you look at these uh, CEOs, uh, all the CEOs may not be apt. So forget about it. 
So we have the POs, PSOs, and CEOs for a BCA program and the, for a course in BCA, we have the CEOs. Okay. Now we can have activities for semester one, like we can have an outreach program, we can have industrial visit, or we call it activity outcomes. We can have n number of activities like this. <clears throat> now, there will be a predefined mapping scale. I hope Dr. Sunil Jawa already mentioned about the, the mapping scale. We will be using a mapping scale here also. Direct and indirect assessment methods may be used into the set proportions. Uh, we should have a proportion between, you know, uh, there may be direct assessment and indirect assessments. Components of assessments may be you can have some strength examination. Of course, every course will have some strength examination. Then regular internal assessments may be there. Other innovative continuous assessments you can have activities or events. If you conduct an event, that also you can bring it to the uh, for the calculation of OB. Personality assessments can be used. If you have a learning management system, you can have some uh, assessments on the LMS that also can be considered for a calculation of attainment. Then possibilities of components of evaluation are numerous. So if you can have uh, n number of activities or assessments, your attainment calculation may be more accurate. Okay. So anything from a class test to a MOOC learning or a third party online test would be used. Option to use innovative learning experiences such as LMS. You can use LMS so that uh, you can have uh, MCQs in the LMS. And uh, this learning management system, which is provided to you, that also you know contains some uh, workshop activity or lesson activity. All these activities will definitely add value for implementing OB. Real-time classroom activities, you can have aptitude assessment portal, users and surveys, gamification elements, many more things like that. Now, questions in semester and examination get mapped to different CEOs. So you may have questions in the substance and examination. You can map each and every question to different CEOs, not only to CEOs, but also you can map questions to the Bloom's taxonomy learning levels from remember to create. Other components may hold your ru at rubric level get mapped to different outcomes. You can have a rubrics for example, if you are giving an assignment, uh, for the evaluation of this assignment, you can have a rubrics. CEOs are in turn mapped to POs and PSOs. CEOs you can map to POs and PSOs. And uh, uh, general activities you can ma uh, map to POs or PSOs directly. That also is possible. CEO attainments can be tabulated at the end of each semester based on student scores. Okay. Uh, at the end of the program tenure, PO and PSO attainments can be calculated. That is a process. So at the end of every semester, that means after, after completing a course, you can calculate the CEO attainment. After the completion of a um, program, you can have the POs and PSOs calculated. A mapping scale uh, like this, you can have a mapping scale like this. This also is a policy of the institution. You can change this mapping scale. For example, if you need uh, zero to five, you can have a, a mapping scale like that. Now we are here for this particular example, we are considering this mapping scale where uh, you can see if uh, the student is scoring only 0%, then attainment is nil. So 0 will be the weightage. 1 to 50% low attainment and uh, 1 is the weightage. 51 to 70% moderate attainment and the weightage is 2. And 71 to 100 significant attainment, the weightage will be 3. Okay. Then COPO mapping. This also you have gone through the mapping process yesterday. So here uh, we are considering one course and all the course outcomes of this particular course. So there are five course outcomes which are mapped to different POs. We have nine POs and you can see the mapping. Uh, for example, CO1 mapped to PO1 at a mapping strength of two to PO2 with a mapping strength two. Whereas PO3 only zero CPO, that means there is no mapping from CO1 to PO3 or PO4 or PO5 like that. Similar way, you can map all the COs with the, the POs. And in some cases, you may not find uh, 
that uh, mapping strain, you can put it zero. The same way you can have activities and activity outcomes, you can map directly to POs. Now you will get a sample program matrix like this. Okay, so once you complete the entire program, if it is a UG program, maybe a BSC maths program or a BCA program, suppose there are five courses in a semester. So in six semesters, you may have 30 courses, an average 30 courses may be there for a three year BCA program, each semester having five courses each. And for each course, if, if five course outcomes are there, 30 into 5, 150 course outcomes will be there. So the first column of this program matrix, you can uh, to lift, you can list all the course outcomes, 150 course outcomes, and all these course outcomes you can map to different POs and PSOs. So here the mapping is done. So this mapping program matrix you will get at the end of the program. Maybe in the last semester, the entire mapping process will be over. So during the beginning of the semester, the faculty has to map the course outcomes to the POs or PSOs. Okay. Then, this is the most important part of uh, implementing OB. Every faculty need to prepare a CO linked assessment plan. And I'm demonstrating a very simple CO linked assessment plan here. Uh, See, for example, you may have the continuous assessment and the uh, uh, semester and examination. Okay, for continuous assessment, you may have different components, like we may have seminar, assignment, in this case, video presentation, group activity, news analysis, that is an activity. Same way we have three internal exams, exam one, exam two, exam three, then at, for attendance, five marks is there. Then for final exam, 60% of the mark is for final exam. It's only an example. In your institution, you may have a different proportion. Instead of 60, 40, you may have 70, 30, in some, or 80, 20 in some cases. Or in some other cases, you know, there are institutions, 50% uh, of the, uh, the uh, mark or grade uh, is for the continuous assessment, 50% for the substantive examination. So it may vary, depends on the institution or the policy of the university. So now we look, look at this CO linked assessment plan. Suppose for seminar, there are four marks for seminar. And here the seminar, you can map to one outcome or to more than one outcome. Suppose we are giving the seminar from a particular topic, which is mapped to course outcome number one. In that case, you can see the seminar, you can map to CO1. And it is not necessarily like that. Maybe in some other course, it may be mapped to CO2. Or in other case, you know, it can be mapped to CO1, CO2, or CO3. To three COs is, or two COs, it is possible. So here I am considering only a simple example to illustrate how the calculation of attainment is done. Uh, for assignment, you can see again, for uh, assignment, uh, 3.5, uh, that is the marks. And it is mapped to CO2. Video presentation, 4, mapped to CO3. Group activity, 3.5, mapped to CO2 and CO4. Then at some one, CO1 and CO2. That means questions for at some one will be from the uh, first two course outcomes. Or all the questions will be mapped to CO1 or CO2, like that. Then at some two CO3, at some three CO4 and CO5. Attendance, it's an activity outcome. And finally, we have the final at some. Definitely, the final at some means the assumption at some which covers the entire syllabus. So it should be mapped to all the CEOs. So this is the CEO linked assessment plan. So once if you have the CEO linked assessment plan, now we can start calculating the attainment of a student. I'm just demonstrating the attainment calculation of a student, of one single student. Now suppose this particular student gets score forty percent of the mark for seminar. Forty percent mark for seminar means the attainment will be one. 
because from 1 to 50% it's a low attainment and uh, the weightage is 1. Suppose the student scores 85% mark for assignment, definitely the attainment is 3 because from 71 to 100, our mapping scale is like that. For 71 to 100, the, the value is 3, mapping strength is 3. Same way for CO3, 70%, attainment 2. Okay, now we are considering only the continuous assessment, not the final exam in this case. After calculating the, uh, uh, the attainment for continuous assessment, we will consider it for the external exam. So in that way, we got the attainment for each of the assessments. Okay. Then we can calculate the attainment like this. Again, this is a simple calculation. I am considering only simple average, no weighted average in this case. Okay. It's so only a simple case, uh, only for understanding the process. Now consider CEO1. CEO1 is mapped to seminar and the attainment is 1. And CO1 appears here also. That means it's mapped to exam 1 and the attainment is 2. So for continuous ass assessment, CO1 appears in two places for exam 1 and C seminar. Attainment is 1 and 2. So taking the simple average, 1 plus 2 by 2, the attainment of CO1 for continuous assessment is 1.5. I'm not considering the weighted average as I mentioned earlier, because it will create more problems. Okay, the same way CO2 is calculated here. CO2 we have calculated like for CO2 assignment, it is mapped to CO2, the attainment level is three, and group activity attainment level is three, uh, yet some one attainment level is two. Okay, so in that case, we have added three plus three plus two. 3 plus 3 plus 2 divided by 3. Again, simple average. I would consider only the simple average, 2.6. Okay. The same way we can calculate CO3, CO4, CO5. Okay. So this is the calculation of the continuous assessment. I hope uh, you got it. Any, any doubt? Should I repeat it? Once more, because these are some calculations, probably there may be some doubts. If you want to repeat it, please type yes in the chat box. Okay. Understood. Uh, but some, some of you want to repeat it again, no? Yes. Once more, I will explain it. Yeah. So this is the CO linked, uh, sorry, this is the CO linked course plan, uh, assessment plan. From there, we have reached here. Now we started the assessment of the students. Uh, then, suppose a student got 40% mark for seminar, his attainment is one, and it is mapped to CO1. Similarly, for a uh, sum one, it's mapped to CO1, the student got Two marks, sorry, 55% mark. That means attainment is two. So one plus two by two. I'm taking the simple average. One plus two by two. That is a 1.5. The same way for CO2, it is mapped to assignment, group activity, and at some one. So the attainment, according to the score of the student, the attainment is for assignment three. For group activity three and for at some one two. So three plus three plus two. That is divided by three, two point six. In that way, we can calculate the attainment for continuous assessment. Okay. Now coming to the final exam. If you are an autonomous college or a university, uh, you will get the marks of the individual questions. For affiliated colleges, you will get the total mark of a student. Okay, so this is for the autonomous college or university. I will explain it. For affiliated colleges, we will have a separate strategy. Okay. Suppose you have 25 questions. 
you have 25 questions and each of these 25 questions may be mapped to different COs. It may be mapped to different COs. Okay. I am picking those questions in the question paper which are mapped to CO1 because I am calculating the attainment of CO1. So suppose there are 25 questions in the question paper. Question number 1, 16, 18, 23, and 25. These five questions are mapped to CO1. Okay. So I'm picking these five questions from the, from the question paper. And I'm calculating the attainment level of a particular student gets. Suppose this particular student gets score 1 out of 1. It's a one mark question, the first question. That means 100% mark for the first question. The question level attainment is 3. This particular question is mapped to CO1. And uh, the student scores 100% mark. That means attainment level is 3. The fourth column is the weightage. I will explain it later. Okay. For the 16th question, 1.5 out of 2. That means it's a two mark question. And the student is scoring 75%. The attainment, question level attainment is 3. 18th question again mapped to CO1, the student is scoring only 50% mark. So attainment is 1. Okay. And 23rd question, the student is scoring 60%, attainment is 2. And 25th question, student is scoring 40% mark, attainment is 1. So this is a question level attainment. And what about the mapping scale of this particular question? One question number one map to CO1 at what weightage? Each question you will be mapping with a particular question with a weightage. Okay, suppose question number one is mapped to CO1 with a weightage two. Fourth column. Question number one map to CO1 with a weightage two. Or I will give you an example. Suppose the CO1 is in the apply level. Start from a verb in apply level. So the CO1 is of the third level, apply level. And suppose the question, question number one is of the understand level, second level. So when we map the question one, understand level question to apply level question, the mapping string may be two. If the question is in the apply level and the CO is also in the apply level, definitely the mapping strength will be at the weightage of the question. Can you say that? Can you mute? Somebody's, somebody's mic is on. Uh, can you please mute, your, mute yourself? So in that way, you can proceed, sir. Yeah. Yeah. In that way, we can map each question. Each question may be mapped to different um, questions. Sorry, different CEOs with a weightage. That is the given in the fourth column. Now, if you are using a call, uh, sorry, a tool. If you are using a tool. You just give the value, the mark here. The rest of the things the tool will take care of. I will just demonstrate a tool also how to calculate if it is automated, your system is automated. Okay. So just enter the mark, the remaining things the tool will take care of. Now, CO1 attainment. Uh, once again, I will explain we have five questions out of 25, which are mapped to CO1. And each question, for each question, how much mark the student gets? That is the second column. Based on that mark, the question level attainment that is shown in the third column. And already these questions are mapped to CO1 with the weightage that is already there. So it is in the fourth column. 
Now, here I am taking the weighted average. Earlier, I had considered the simple average. For your understanding, here I am considering the weighted average. So, here you can see 3 into 2 plus 3 into 3 plus 1 into 1 plus 2 into 2 plus 1 into 3 divided by 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3. So, you'll get 2.09. This is the CO1 attainment of a particular student edge for the final exam. Okay. Now, we have got CO1, the attainment of CO1 for the continuous assessment and also for the final exam. Okay. Now, based on the policy of the institution, we can have a uh, proportion or ratio for calculation. Uh, the beginning of this session, uh, we have seen in the Mentimeter, like, you know, uh, project work or a, a seminar or assignment or case study, all these contribute more value to OB implementation. That means all these activities or assessments comes under continuous assessment. So we can give more weightage for continuous assessment while we are calculating the attainment level. Okay, no need to keep up that the same ratio with which we have uh, uh, assessed the students like a continuous assessment and the uh, semester examination. So we can give more weightage for continuous assessment for calculating attainment level. Here we are giving 80% for a continuous assessment and 20% for final exams. So in that day, uh, case, we will take the, the weighted average, the value. Finally, we will get 1.618. This is the calculation of CO1, only one CO uh, for a particular student X. Then coming to the direct assessment and indirect assessment. Uh, direct assessment means all those assessments which are conducted by the faculty. Whereas indirect assessment means it can be a survey or if you are using a third party, a third person uh, to assess the students, that comes under the indirect assessment. Suppose if you are uh, uh, sending the students for a industry visit and uh, suppose if you ask the industry people there to assess the students based on some criteria or something like that, that is an assessment by a third party that also comes under indirect assessment. So we can give weightage for direct assessment. Some cases, uh, some of the institutions, they used to give 90% weightage for direct assessment and only 10% for indirect assessment. Uh, when we are conducting survey, that is a indirect assessment. Okay. So in that way, we calculate the CO1, CO2, and CO up to CO5. Okay. Then, this is for one student. We have calculated the course outcomes for one student. Now, if you have 60 students in the class, you have to calculate it for 60 students. So anyway, manually, it is not possible. You have to use a tool or a, some Excel templates or something like that for calculation. Okay. Then you can convert it into a percentage attainment. How much percentage attainment for the class? You can take the average of the uh, CO attainment of the class. Okay. Percentage of students attaining more than 60%. That means out of 3, 60% is 1.8. So you can calculate like that. Attainment levels are to be evaluated for all POs and PSOs the same way. Now, once if you calculate the CO attainment, you can calculate the PO attainment. Because already we have the mapping table. Already that uh, matrix is available. Suppose here, uh, the CO1 attainment is 2.12 and CO1 is mapped to PO1 with a weightage 2. So in that case, 2 into 2.12, then 3 into 1.52. In that case, in the first column, if you calculate the weighted average at the end, the last row, you can see the weighted average. Weighted average of all those values in the first column that gives your PO attainment, PO1 attainment. Similarly, you can calculate PO2. If there are nine POs, calculate all the nine POs, attainment of all the nine POs, then calculate attainment of PSOs. 
So in that way, you can calculate the POs. So once we get the COs, calculate the COs, you can proceed to calculate the POs. Here also, I uh, already I have mentioned it's not uh, possible manually, very difficult. Um, again, PO attainment levels could be based on attainment levels of direct and indirect. After the end of the program, you can uh, conduct a survey, a feedback or something like that. You can bring that value also for the uh, calculation. Here, suppose during the survey, a particular student has responded like this. Is a, a self-assessment is three out of three for a domain knowledge, PO1. So definitely we have to take that value. Uh, here we are giving 20% weightage for that. Even 10% is more and uh, it is enough. Three ten percent weightage for indirect assessment is enough. Okay, so you can calculate the value like this. Then finally, you can calculate the POs <coughs> and PO, PO, so average everything you can calculate. Then the percentage you can calculate. Uh, institutional level evaluation, average attainment level with the respect to POs and POs of every outgoing batch with 100% with the percentage students above various level of attainment. So all these uh, analytics, I will uh, I will give you more idea about the analytics the other in the next section. Uh, we can have some better practices like a pen paper test, open book at sums with questions mapped to different CEOs. You can have conduct open book at sums that also is possible. Activities like industrial visit, field trips, projects, social activities, events, assignments, etc., with components at rubric level mapped to different outcomes. Okay. General activities also can be mapped with the implementation of NEP. Uh, even you know, the, if the student is going for an evening work or a morning work, that can be counted. Uh, you can give some credit for that. So that is the latest uh, new education policy uh, guidelines. So in that way, you can bring those things to the OB attainment calculation also. Some OB only activities you can have, which will not be reflected in the mark list, but you can use all these uh, assessments or activities for a, for a calculation of the attainment level. And finally, uh, uh, yeah, so one general slide challenges of 21st century education, how to improve student engagement, that is very important. Um, you, during this pandemic, you know, all of us, we were offering online education uh, and definitely the uh, attention span of the students so now it's come down to even to five minutes or six minutes. So even the physical classes, we are experiencing the same thing. So when we implement OB, this is very important, how to improve student engagement, how to equip students with the 21st century skill, knowledge, skills, and attitudes. That is very important because this is again connected with OB. How to allow continuous improvement in curricula, uh, incorporation of better open educational resources, more effective teaching, how to ensure examination system reinforces teaching and learning. That is also important when we consider OB, uh, more learning should happen. How to ensure lifelong learning, how to teach a large class, all these are challenges. So what does OB aim to address? Uh, what do we want the students to know or understand or be able to do the skill sets? So that is a paradigm shift. How can we best help students to achieve it as a guide, as a mentor, how we can uh, help the students. How will we know whether the students have achieved it? Okay, that is the assessment and evaluation. And how do we close the loop for further improvements? Continuous quality improvement, uh, that is a must when we implement OB because when you can calculate the attainment level and uh, already if you, you might have uh, set a target and if you are not achieving the target, what are the remedial measures we are taking? So all these are very much important. So through implementation of OB, uh, you will get a lot of analytics. I will show those analytics in the next slide. Yeah, uh, this is my phone number and my mail ID. I will share it later also. Uh, I will end up with the, this particular slide, set of slides, and I will continue with, the, I will sh uh, showcase uh, how we can calculate the attainment level by using a tool. Uh, after that, we will uh, I will address your queries because you may have some doubts. I understand. Uh, maybe I will show you 
uh, a tool. Now, suppose if you are using a tool, uh, it's very easy to calculate the attainment level, not only for our attainment level, but also for a, a better analytics. Uh, this is uh, a faculty login. Uh, you just quickly go through this tool. Okay. Suppose we are having a course called uh, Academic and Professional English. That is one of the course. Now, the faculty has to upload the course outcomes. That is the first task for the faculty. And you can fix the target also. Once if you upload the course outcomes along with that, you can fix the target for each course outcome. This is an only an example. Again, we have is the target like 60%, then 50% uh, for one course outcome, or for all other course outcomes, 60%. Okay. So when we are fixing the target, uh, it's good that uh, uh, the first year you fix a lower target. Uh, maybe the subsequent years you can increase that target. Again, for uh, uh, POs and PSOs, you can have uh, targets. But for POs, you can have a lower target, like even 40% is enough for a PO. Okay, because PO is more generic. Then you can have uh, the mapping. Mm -hmm. That also you can do it uh, by um, downloading an Excel sheet and just uh, have this mapping. Like each PSO is mentioned there and the CEOs are here. So how it is mapped, how each CEO is mapped with a PSO, what is the mapping strength? You can do all these things. PO mapping also you can do. And uh, if you're using a tool, definitely you can have an analytics about the mapping you have done. For example, uh, at the end of this program, you can see, for example, if you consider a communicative competence, this is a PO2, only two COs are mapped to this particular PO so that it is not properly represented. So after completing the entire program, entire courses, if only two COs are mapped to a particular PO, definitely uh, that PO is not properly represented by COs. In that case, you know, you can have some ad hoc courses uh, which can be mapped to this particular PO. That way you can improve that mapping. So semester wise, you can check the mapping and uh, if you find uh, uh, some shortages of mapping, you know, uh, some problem in between, you can add that. Then, as I mentioned earlier, the components of mapping. So this is the, uh, maybe you may have internal exam, each, each question in the internal exam or a external exam, you can map with a particular taxonomy level and to a particular CEO. These are all CEOs. The CEOs are mentioned there in the top. These are all CEOs. So each question is mapped to a particular uh, taxonomy level and to CEO, like that. All the questions are already mapped here. And if you're using a question bank, I will show you a question. How you, if you are using a question bank, all the questions are already mapped there and uh, you will get a report from that question bank. And each question is mapped to uh, um, Bloom's taxonomy levels and uh, CEOs. Now, suppose you have an assignment you can have the criteria for evaluation or rubrics you can set like this. So for an assignment, you can have the rubrics and each of these rubrics you can map to different taxonomy levels and the COs. And otherwise, suppose if you are not using a rubrics, the assignment itself, you can map with the, uh, the corresponding Bloom's taxonomy levels. If it is an apply level assignment, you can map it with the apply level and with the, the COs. If with the one CEO or two CEO, it's possible. So each and every activity at the time of conducting that assessment or activity, you can add it to the tool. That is the advantage. So at every time you can uh, do it. And uh, after adding this, this is the CEO linked course plan, uh, assessment plan. And after entering the particular component, you can conduct the exam or assessment 
then you can enter the mark. Again, you can use an Excel sheet. You can enter the mark. Once you enter the mark, you can check the attainment. So this is actually uh, the end of the program. That means all the values are already entered, all the assessments, activities, everything entered. So in the final year, after completion of the program, you will get a report like this for each student, the attainment of each student. The first column you can see attainment of CO1 out of three for each student. And second column, average attainment. That means the class average. Then we have the CO2, third column. The attainment of each of the students for CO2. Then average, CO3, average like that. So this is the table we will get. So in this case, the faculty has to enter, first of all, enter the course outcomes, the targets, then the mapping process you have to complete. It's only a one-time activity, maybe for at least for one hour, if you spend in the, in the beginning of the semester, you can do all these things. And at the time of assessment or attainment, just add that particular component uh, and the rubrics and the mapping and the marks you can enter, you will get to the attainment like this. And more than this attainment calculation, a lot of reports you will get that will be useful in many ways. Again, you can see this is a report. We have set the target 60% for CO1, 60% for CO2, etc. And the average attainment is given here. Then the standard deviation is given there. Percentage attainment. See, for CO1, 90% of the students in the class have attained 60% target. Okay, the same case, case with the uh, CO2, 90% of the students have attained 60% of the target, but for the third course outcome, CO3, only 17.5% of the students have achieved that 60% target. Okay, so this is actually an insight for a faculty. Now you can see CO3, this red colored, uh, red color means it's less than 60%. So what the faculty can do in that case, uh, the faculty can give one more activity or assignment or a different activity or different assignment. And uh, the faculty can bring the student to the desired level. So if we have set a target like 60% attainment and uh, suppose the more students, the entire class got below that target. Definitely we can have another activity or a remedial uh, measure something remedial activity or something like that we can add and we can bring all the students to the desired level and this is called assurance of learning the concept of assurance of learning which we can use with ob because once if you have the data then you can take some remedial measures based on the data okay and the details of each students that's also given here with a lot of visualization okay then coming to the HOD login, so once if the data, everything is there, we can see the progression of the batch, how the batch is progressing, the trend analysis, semester-wise, how the batch is uh, progressing based on Bloom's taxonomy levels, based on POs, and based on TSOs. COs already we have. Yeah. Then again, uh, we have some other analytics like uh, the progression of each student compared to the class average. The taxonomy level, you can see the yellow line represents the student's progression, how the student is progressing through the semesters. The blue line represents the batch progression. So in this case, you can see the student's performance is com low compared to the batch performance. And this is actually useful for uh, when we conduct PTA meetings. Again, based on this report, we can classify the students into different categories. Like we will get an outlier report from this tool, or uh, we can have the slow learners, advanced learners, etc. That also is available. That report is available. 
again, we can compare semester wise. So this is a uh, performance of a student in the second semester compared to the first semester. You can see a more upward trend the second semester compared to the first semester. Now, if you go to the third semester, you can see more downward trend in the third semester. So that means there may be some problem with the student, maybe uh, personal problems or uh, family problems, or there's some problems with the, some particular subjects. So the tool will identify all these things and they provide a report, report of those students who has problems like this, or it is called outlier report. The same way we can have a small learners report or advanced learners report. So based on that, we can definitely uh, take some remedial measures or uh, based on the student diversity, we can implement many things. And all these things are useful for a uh, NAC accreditation, student diversity, and what all things we have provided, uh, or what are, what are the challenges we have given to the advanced learners, all these things. So based on this report, this is an authentic report, based on this report, we can uh, take the steps like that. So this is a, an example of a tool uh, which we can use for calculation of attainment. And uh, not only this, we have developed this tool and we have uh, uh, the Excel template also for uh, small institutions for the calculation of attainment. We can have, we can use an Excel tool uh, at least for calculating the attainment level and some reports also, they, uh, um, it will give some reports. Okay. Then uh, uh, I will show you one more uh, question paper, how the question paper is mapped. And uh, tomorrow I'll show you how we can develop a question bank like this, only for your understanding. This is an example of a question paper. You don't look at the questions, you know, the, this, it's not a, the proper mapping because you can see the second question is write the functions of micro tubule. Uh, you know, it's only a K1 level, it is K2 level given here. It's only for a demonstration purpose. So the, the knowledge levels, then the course outcomes, each and every question is mapped to the knowledge levels and course outcomes. So once, if you already if you have a question bank like this, you can demonstrate this even for accreditation purpose. And uh, the students will also know uh, uh, the questions and uh, how it is mapped. Okay. And you can set a proportion of the knowledge levels. You can say that 40% uh, of the questions, at least from the higher order, something like that. Okay. Uh, this is an example of a, uh, okay. Uh, this is an example of a uh, question paper, which is mapped to both the uh, uh, knowledge levels and uh, CO levels. Then uh, coming to today's task. And after that, we will have a Q&A &A session. So we have a CO computation table. This is a miniature of an Excel tool. Uh, for your understanding, you can just uh, calculate uh, the CO attainment. Only for understanding the, the process. See, what you can do is um, you can add your CO's, course outcomes, the, the first uh, Tab, you can write the course outcomes, but the course outcomes it's already there. CO1, CO2, CO3, it's already written there. So, no need of writing the course outcomes, uh, just it is already there. Okay, then the questions you can pick 10 questions or 25 questions. Uh, suppose if you're Having 10 questions in the question paper for internal exam or something, 
you can type that question here otherwise also there is no problem because the question number is there but you have to map that question with a particular co if it is mapped to co1 with a weightage 2 you can put 2 there and if suppose that question is mapped to co2 also two co's you can put one there or three there and suppose it is not mapped to co3 you can use that blank space okay if it is not mapped to CO4, again, use that map. blank space, CO5. Now, this is the first question. Suppose the first question carries two marks. Put that maximum mark for that question. So for the, from the question paper, suppose this particular question, question number one, which we can map to CO1 and CO2 with a mapping strength, and also the maximum mark for that question is two, type two there. Similarly, add 10 questions or 25 questions asked according to your will. Okay. So these are the things you have to do here. The first sheet, just course outcomes, it's already there. So no need of writing the course outcomes. The CO1, the numbering is there. Then we have the questions. Uh, question number is already there. So just do the mapping. Each question you can map to COs and uh, type the maximum marks there for each question, the last column. Then the second page, uh, uh, you can take, uh, you, you can consider 10 students, a roll number of 10 students are given there. You can give the name, uh, it is not required, not mandatory because the roll number is there. Then enter the mark for question number one. Suppose the student, get two out of two, roll number two, get two out of two, put two there. Roll number two, suppose for the first question, he score only one mark, put one mark there. Like that, you enter the mark of 10 students minimum. Uh, you can, if you are considering 10 questions, you type that uh, marks entry, you can enter the marks there. And one more thing you have to do, we can set a target for the CO. Suppose we have given putting a you know setting 50% target for CO1, 550 there. And the number of students, if you are considering 10 students, put 10. So this is the uh, things you have to add here, like uh, name, no need of uh, writing the name because uh, roll numbers are there. But you have to fill the this column, the marks for each student for each question. You have to enter the marks here and the target and the number of students. If the number of students is 10, put 10 there. That's all. And the, the third sheet, do not enter anything. Here you will get the course outcomes, the value of the course outcomes. And already we have set the target, then whether the target is met or not. All these things, the information you will get in the third sheet. So the first sheet and the second sheet, you have to enter some values. And the final sheet, the third sheet, you will get a, the attainment of the students. So as a trial, you can do it. Uh, that will give you more idea about attainment calculation. Okay. Now, coming to the LMS, uh, we have many activities there in the LMS. I hope most of you have gone through that LMS. Yeah, many of you have submitted your uh, uh, your uh, answers or uh, responses. The Bloom taxonomy questions also a lot of participants you have in, uh, submitted your uh, questions based on different uh, learning level. Now, what you can you do? <clears throat> sorry, what you can do is you can just uh, respond, or you can give your comments here whether it is actually a question from that particular level or not. So, while going through these questions, you will get some idea. So, and course outcomes, uh, many of you have uh, submitted your course outcomes. 
here also you can give your responses your uh, comments okay you can give your comments like that and now this is the fourth day i'm oh, sorry this is the fifth day so we have the task already there you can download that uh, template from here and uh, you can upload okay. so that's about uh, uh, the lms <clears throat> any 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 questions you have otherwise i will discuss uh, some <clears throat> best practices or something like that probably tomorrow also we'll have a we'll give you some idea about uh, some tools uh, there is a question how is weightage decided okay weightage uh, <clears throat> uh, in the example uh, each question you have, you have to map with uh, a particular CEO each question you have to map with a particular CEO, uh, then there should be a weightage. You no, know? like uh, suppose uh, as an example, I already discussed that uh, if the CEO is of third level, apply level, and the the question is of uh, understand level, suppose, then the mapping strength is two, so that is the weightage which I have given there in the example. I think already it is mentioned uh, in yesterday's class, no? CEO attainment does 50%, uh, yeah. Actually, uh, um, it is a best practice, I can tell you. It's not uh, necessary that you have to pitch the CO attainment as uh, 50 percent or 60 percent um, in the first year of implementation of OB, it's better you fix a low level target and you know if you achieve that target next year you can um, uh, you can have a better target like 60 percent or something like that okay. and most of the cases you know usually uh, the target uh, if you fix the 70 percent or uh, more than that it will not be attained i will share my number here somebody was asking for that in the case of uh, in the case of grade how will we put marks for each Question. No, in the case of grading, we will have a different approach. Yeah. For a course, how can we do indirect survey? Survey you can uh, you can conduct at the end of the course. Like you know, at the end of the course, maybe um, you, you can ask some questions, some five questions based on that CEO. Uh, you can ask like this uh, for the first CEO, what is your level of attainment? What is your level of attainment? The student will answer like this. If you are giving options like 0, 1, 2, and 3, the student may answer like 1, 2, or 3. That way you can do it. What is the base to fit CO attainment? Okay, already I mentioned that. Okay, tomorrow I will give you an idea about how these questions can be mapped and uh, all this grading again, because I will show you another tool where each of the question you can map to the CEOs and the taxonomy levels. Okay, I will show you some uh, templates so that you can understand it in a better way, how the questions can be mapped and uh, how the weightage, we can fix the weightage and everything there. And uh, each question can be mapped to CEOs and uh, out, uh, taxonomy levels also. And we can categorize the questions based on their, you know, some of the questions may be theory questions, some of the questions may be 
application level questions to some of them may be case studies many things like that uh, if i have 10 topics for exam do i have to keep 10 co's usually uh, for a syllabus there may be uh, in most of the cases there may be five or six modules or units okay so it's better you can have one co for uh, one module or one unit but if you have more than five units or CEOs, as uh, I think um, uh, mentioned here, I have 10 topics for exam. 10 topics, I understand it, uh, it may be 10 modules or 10 units. If it is 10 units or 10 modules, uh, you can combine two topics or two units and you can have a CEO. Okay. It's not necessary that you can have one CEO from one module. Not necessary like that. Better you can keep uh, five CEOs. That is uh, as a best practice because for in future uh, it's easy for you to calculate the attainment level. And again, for the, the mapping purpose, it may be easy. Okay. Um, I think the questions are over. I think um, most of the questions are over. If you have any more questions, you can post it. We still have time. We can pick them up now. If you need to access the LMS, you need to make the payment, uh, the details of which I'm posting in the chat. Okay, so you need to make the payment so that you get access to the LMS and you can uh, do these tasks in the LMS. Okay, there's a question, how to improve attainment values? <clears throat> how to improve attainment values, you know. Um, when we are <clears throat> looking at outcome-based education, uh, the process is you have the outcomes first. So to attain those outcomes, uh, you can have different activities or assessments. So here, um, to improve attainment values means you are trying to achieve that target or that attainment. The indirect way, you can have n number of activities. That is the only option. For example, if you are just conducting an internal exam and a external exam and one or two activities like assignment or seminar, you cannot improve the attainment of the students. Okay. So it's better you can have more activities or more assessments, but it should not be a burden for the faculty. So in that case, if you can use some ICT tools, even for a Moodle LMS or something like that, even you can have uh, the, the QSS or the MCQs that will also give value addition. So there's only way. And again, if you can have some innovative assessments and activities, uh, tomorrow, I will give you some idea about uh, uh, some uh, Padlet or uh, um, which I'm using. Uh, Padlet is already there in the LMS. You have the video also, uh, and it is free. It's available for free. So uh, you can use Padlet for uh, some of the assessments. Uh, tomorrow, I'll give you some idea about that also. Is this tool available to public? This tool is not uh, uh, not available to public. Uh, there is a cost associated with that uh, tool. Yeah. I'm talking about Moodle. Moodle is uh, free, you know. You can use it, you can customize it, and you can use it for free. And uh, some other ICT tools, which are listed in the LMS, that also uh, available for free. Again, Padlet is one of the best tools you can use. Okay. Whether we can also sign members are facing issues while doing manual. 
uh, I I think you are asking about uh, the attainment calculation. Um, this tool is being used by many education institutions. Uh, not only this tool, even for small institutions, uh, we can support them by providing with uh, some tools in the uh, Excel. Some Excel templates are available for some small institutions. Without much cost, they can use it. Yeah, you can contact us uh, for further support, definitely in future. Yeah, for attainment calculation, you can use a tool like this, or uh, you can even use some Excel templates that also we can support you. Okay, so we will wind up uh, today's tech session and tomorrow we will uh, have a one hour session and after that we will be having the validity function. Uh, Dr. Rajin Gurukul will be joining tomorrow. Uh, we will definitely have a section uh, by Dr. Rajin Gurukul. A lot of insights he can share with you. Okay. And some other tools and again some best practices we will discuss tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you, Mandar sir. Thank you for that wonderful session. Yes, please join it tomorrow at 7 p.m. sharp. We will start the session and uh, we will have more insights to more of these topics and we will have the uh, after one hour uh, after by eight we will have the validity function so join in for that as well um, thank you again for joining today uh, thank you for you uh, uh, for taking the time to uh, join and to understand these topics uh, please make sure you do the task on the lms as well uh, i have also also posted the uh, contact numbers in case you face any difficulty with the lms uh, please note that you will also get your certificates for download um, uh, in a couple of days after the uh, the session is over. All right, uh, we will end for today, and we will see you tomorrow. Have a good evening.